Today, I'll be showing you how to create a dense cloud atmosphere using the particle simulator in HitFilm. We'll begin by setting up the textures and camera movement, then add lightning and corresponding flashes. I'm Javert Valbar for InscapeDigital.com. Let's get started. I'll add the particle simulator to the timeline and set it to 3D Unrolled. I'll move the camera so that it's looking down on the scene. Then in the simulator controls, come over here to General and set the time shift to negative 1, so that there are already particles on screen. In the controls for the emitter, set the shape to cube and make it really big. I set the depth to about 20,000. Now in the particle system settings, hit the keyframe button for particles per second and set the number to around 100. Move forward one frame and set it to zero. Come down to movement and set the life to 60 seconds and the speed to 10. Under appearance, select built-in for texture source and fluffy cloud for the texture. Come down to scale and set it to 400%. Now this might look like it's covering a lot of ground, but if I move the camera up, you can see that there are a lot of blank spaces. We need to fill those in with other textures to increase variety. Before we duplicate this emitter though, we need to add variation. I'll set the texture angle for these particles to 50, and the texture angle per second to 2 to give them a slight spin. Then I'll add some scale and speed variation. Once you get that looking how you like, rename the system so you can keep track of it. Then duplicate either the system or the emitter, if you want to move the position of the cube. Under General, set the seed to a different number. This will fill in the space a bit more. For this system, I'll change the texture to Missile Smoke and make them all larger. Repeat these steps as many times as you want in order to get a good variety of cloud shapes, sizes, and forms. I ended up using six particle systems in my final shot, with a fog layer above everything. And once that's set up, I'll duplicate the entire particle simulator effect. Then I'll go into its transform properties, raise it on the Y axis, and rotate it on the X and Z to get a sort of cloud ceiling. The camera movement consists of a simple keyframe, to move down as if it's falling. I also adjusted the X rotation value so that it would look towards the center continuously. Now the most important thing in this entire effect is the placement of the lights in your scene. I'll go ahead and create one here, then go into the settings and set the falloff to linear. Adjusting both this and the intensity will give you control over how many of the cloud layers are visible. If the whole scene is lit up, there's no sense of depth. If you only light a small part of it, the rest is in complete darkness, and your audience won't know that there's more to see. In my final comp, I had one light off to the left side, and one filler light, which barely illuminates the foreground of the scene. To create lightning flashes, make a new light and set the fall off low again. Then keyframe the intensity to move up and down quickly. You can play several of these throughout your scene to illuminate different parts at once. Let's add some visible lightning to this first flash here. I'll create a new plane and add the effect onto it. I'll stretch the two ends to the very top and bottom, since we're going to be placing it in 3D space anyway. Then I'll come down to animation and drop the speed to zero. I'll make the glow a very pale orange yellow color and lower the opacity. Most of the glow is going to come later in the final grade. Now I'll right click and set the blending mode to add, and then make the layer 3D. Come over here to material and uncheck illuminated. Now you can position it until it appears between the two clouds. Once it's in place, trim it to two or three frames. It should just be very quick. I repeated this process multiple times placing the lightning layers in different positions in the 3D space, and changing the seed so that they would all look different. A big part of the final effect is the grade. I'll go ahead and create one here. 
One of the first effects was Level's histogram, and that helped me to see which spots were too dark or too blown out. I wanted to make sure that you could see what was going on. Next I added a curves effect, and I dropped the red channel way down, but added a little bit of it back into the highlights, since that's where the lightning strikes will be. Then I dropped the green until I got a nice blue look. Let's add a glow effect. I'll make the threshold and radius high, and set the blend mode to add. In the per channel intensity controls, I'll adjust it until it's reddish orange. In the final composite, I also added shake, bokeh lens dirt, film grain, and a letterbox. Much of this effect relies on you individually placing the lightning and corresponding flashes, so take your time and make it appear random and hectic. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'll see you all in the next video.